Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. It's a look back at some of our favorite stories from Merck Animal Health. We get management tips from the experts at Merck that can help producers in all parts of the country. And now, a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. Job one for cattle producers is ensuring their animals, whether a cow, a calf, or in the feedlot, stay healthy. This week, we're sharing some expert insights on animal health and the keys to keeping your herd healthy with some of our favorite stories from our friends at Merck Animal Health. Let's have a look. producers put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into making their operations successful. The last thing any of them want to deal with in their herd is respiratory disease. It's a significant animal health issue and costs producers an average of $15 per calf per year. That equates to over a billion dollar problem for our industry. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter visited South Carolina to see how one family operation works to prevent calf respiratory disease. We're a family-operated Angus seed stock operation. We um, run about 900 brood cows on 2,500 acres. We also have a herd of commercial cattle. Our primary purpose for existence is to produce Angus bulls for the commercial cattle industry. And pretty much everything we do revolves around that and trying to create a total picture to produce bulls that'll go out and work for people that'll be trouble free and um, go out and produce the type of cattle that the industry needs today. Kevin and Lydia Yan run a family owned and operated Angus seed stock outfit in Ridge Spring, South Carolina. The Yans take a lot of pride not only in raising top quality cattle, but also in their customer service. It's very important to us that the cattle when they leave here go perform and do well for their new owners. And we want to do everything in our power to make those cattle perform well. With their livelihood riding on producing healthy cattle that meet their customers' high expectations, the Yans can't risk a respiratory disease setback in their herd. I can just imagine from a cost standpoint, from a reassurance standpoint, to be able to tell our customers that everything's under control and that the health is good, and then to know that we've had a respiratory outbreak would really be a problem for me to be able to stand behind our cattle. Cattle are, are how we make our living, and, and um, we need them to be healthy, and we need them to perform, and, and we have scale, sales scheduled twice a year, and we need cattle to sell. A respiratory outbreak would be very detrimental. Keeping their herd healthy and profitable means doing everything they can to prevent respiratory disease. Kevin and Lydia say a good overall herd health program is the foundation to a successful operation. We don't have a problem, we don't want a problem, and we don't want our customers to have a problem. Our goal is to sell bulls to people that go out, work for them, that make them want to tell their neighbor, I got this bull, he's great, I had not had any trouble with him, I'm going back to get my next one from there. We have a very um, stringent herd health program here at Yon Family Farms. We work very closely with our local veterinarian, Dr. Jeff Norden, scheduling and, and um, mapping out our, our herd health program throughout the year. It takes a, uh, a team approach and you have to uh, break it down in components and, and work out a good game plan in order to successfully manage it. Every year their game plan includes a strong vaccination program to ensure their cattle are protected from respiratory disease from the very beginning. Well, the vaccination program is the critical component of a herd health program. Without a good vaccination program, without a good vaccine, you're probably doomed from the start. I don't think that you can really overemphasize the importance of a good vaccination program. A respiratory vaccine is just the basis of what we do. They work. When we wean cattle, we don't need to, to worry about a respiratory blow up. And when we use good products and do it in the proper manner, we haven't had problems with respiratory disease. The basic respiratory diseases that cattle need to be vaccinated for are IBR, BVD, type 1 and 2, BRSV, PI3 or parainfluenza 3, and then Manheimia hemolytica and pastoral multocida. 
The Yons use the Vista line of vaccines as part of their vaccination program and fortunately have never had to address any respiratory disease setback in their herd. We want our cattle to, to be billet proof when they leave here. We've used Vesta, been very pleased with the results. It has worked well. This is a very good choice for respiratory vaccine because it offers the most complete protection on the market today. And it's also one dose, so it's not a vaccine that has to be boosted every time. And it's the only vaccine that's on the market that is modified live for the virals and an avirulent live on the pastorella portion. Vesta is a good vaccine. I think you need a vaccine that's certainly efficacious. You need a vaccine that has a long duration of immunity. You need a vaccine that has a low reactivity rate. And you also need one that's cost efficient. It could just be really devastating if you did have a respiratory outbreak. And fortunately, we have not been in that situation. And I attribute that to the fact that we've had such a good prevention program and that our vaccines have worked and been effective. The Yons rely on Vista and Vision not only because they effectively prevent respiratory disease, but also because they're less stressful on the cattle. We vaccinate calves at three to five months of age, and then again two to three weeks prior to weaning to, to get that um, immune response, getting those cattle ready to, to be weaned using just Vista once and Vision at weaning. After we vaccinate calves, we don't see the calves go through what we would think of as a typical stress period. They, they still seem pretty much just like they did the day before you worked them after you've run them through the chute and vaccinated them, done whatever else, tattooing or whatever else you were doing to them that day. When we look at respiratory protection, what we're actually trying to do is immunize the animal against the threats that it's got to meet, but we don't want to immunize it with a vaccine that's gonna cost us so much in production. And Vista appears to be a very mild vaccine, as you heard Lydia say earlier, they've seen no stress from the vaccine. A comprehensive vaccination program is just one component to preventing respiratory disease. A strong nutrition program, starting with calves nursing soon after birth to ensure they're getting colostrum, is critical in order for the cattle to respond effectively to the vaccines. Colostrum quality is, is most important. We know that a calf just needs to get up, nurse, and, and hopefully he's going to have a very high quality colostrum, but we feel like nutrition and a, a good herd health vaccination program improves the quality of that colostrum. When we vaccinate, we think the fact that we have taken care of them from all the other standpoints makes that whole vaccine process easier on them and the vaccine work effectively. Despite the best vaccination and nutrition programs, calves can still pick up viruses and contract pneumonia. Dr. Newcomb says observing the animals on a regular basis is important to diagnosing and treating the disease early. It's important because respiratory disease can, can, can travel pretty fast between the animals. So once you start seeing one or two animals, you'll start seeing the whole herd start getting an outbreak. Once an animal contracts respiratory disease, that can affect his production throughout his lifetime. The Yons know that with any program, it takes many components working together to be successful and effective. While a strong vaccination program is important for ensuring the overall health of the herd, they say it's just one piece of the puzzle. Is it any one area that is going to make our herd more productive? It's, it's the genetic component, it's the nutritional component, it's the herd health component. Parasite control is a basis for having a good herd health program as, um, as cattle with parasites aren't going to respond to the vaccines and, and get the immune response that we're looking for. It's a system that it takes all of them done properly for our herd to be productive. They all work together as pieces of the puzzle. If one component of the puzzle is missing, then we have an incomplete product to sell. So we try to fill in all the blanks and, and put all the pieces together that can help us create a product that's trouble free for our customers. If you look at nutrition, you look at parasite control, you look at stress management, those are all the foundations that you have to build a herd health program on. You want to minimize stress, you want to maximize the calf's immunity, and you want to maximize the calf's nutritional status. And when you vaccinate, you want to use the most complete vaccine out there on the market today, and that's going to be Vista. Caring for their cattle and staying up to date on their herd health program is a way of life for Kevin and Lydia Yon, and it's a quality that many people take notice of. Kevin and Lydia, they're, they're go-getters. Uh, 
They pay attention to detail. They go the extra mile. They grasp uh, new concepts and, and that they're willing to change depending upon the market condition. We've just been entrusted to be stewards of the cattle and the land, and we take that very seriously. And uh, we feel very blessed to get to do it every day. We get to see better scenery and more miracles every day than you know most people get to see in a lifetime. It's just what we love doing, and I hope we get to do it for a long time to come. Reporting from Yon Family Farms in Ridge Spring, South Carolina, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. To learn more about the Vista and Vision vaccines from Merck Animal Health, visit the website MerckAnimalHealthUSA.com. You're watching NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen on RFD TV. Its arrival is as routine as the truck that brings the next load of calves. You stand ready, waiting, watching for symptoms. A revolutionary new weapon in hand. Unique chemistry and hard-hitting active ingredient. Longer duration in the respiratory tract. Rapid absorption. Join the Zuprevolution. Zuprevo, Tilda Pearson. See your veterinarian. The Case I-8 Spring Sales Event is on now, making it a great time to get the equipment you need for this season. With 0% financing for 60 months on all Farmall and Maxim Series tractors, as well as our complete line of hay tools, you can turn everyday chores into everyday savings. But hurry, the Spring Sales Event ends June 30th, 2014. For more information, ask your local Case I-8 dealer or go to caseih.com slash special offers. Welcome back. Bovine respiratory disease, or BRD, is among the most costly health problems in the cattle feeding industry. The cost of treating BRD in cattle is a significant concern for cattle feeders like the Vogels, a family that's been feeding cattle in Montana for more than three generations. The Vogels understand firsthand the importance of managing this costly disease. Cattleman and Cattleman reporter Matt Fleck has more. My grandfather, he started feeding cattle back in the 1950s, was one of the first feedlots in the Elston Valley to feed cattle year-round. And then over the decades, uh, my grandpa, father, and uh, uncle have built on at added capacity. Uh, currently, we are about 6,500 head capacity. In the fall, we usually feed a few thousand head of yearlings, and then start getting some calves in and then as they go out in December through February we'll bring in more calves and feed them through the summer. The Vogels take pride in their work and they recognize the advantage of feeding high quality animals and although they source many cattle from nearby ranches they also purchase loads of cattle from sale barns across the region. When the cattle come in the cattle are taken processed as soon as possible and uh, uh, as we get them worked, you know, we do buy quality cattle and uh, make sure that the health is taken care of as soon as possible and, and they're uh, vaccinated on a, shortly after arrival. And then the cattle are checked in the pens on a daily basis and make sure that the health is, stays good on the cattle. The vaccination part of the program is very important. Prevention and rapid treatment of BRD is critical for cattle feeders like the Vogels. Controlling BRD is a difficult problem, as everybody knows in the feedlot industry and the cattle industry as a whole. It's our number one health issue, and primarily because we have so many different backgrounds that cattle come from and the way they're prepared uh, to come to a feed yard. Um, so it takes a, a management strategy primarily on receiving cattle that's flexible, trying to find out as much uh, about the cattle and their prior history uh, so that they know whether they need to repeat vaccinations, whether they've had any vaccinations before, whether or not they've been weaned, all these kind of factors that play into their immune status. 
BRD is caused by stress associated with shipping and the spread of bacterial and viral pathogens between commingled cattle. As a result, identifying the symptoms of BRD and treating outbreaks quickly are critical. The control of BRD at the feed yard level is uh, aimed at number one, uh, prevention and number two at, at treatment and so cattle especially that are evaluated as being high risk that is they've been hauled a long way they've been uh, commingled through livestock marketing channels um, uh, bad weather just been weaned all those kind of things put put cattle at higher risk and so those cattle very often are, are treated metaphylactically with a usually a long-acting antibiotic like Zuprevo to help limit the amount of sickness that they're going to initially see. Following that, then it's a matter of having the management system in place with pen riders uh, to be going through cattle often enough to be able to spot them at the first signs of respiratory disease, get those cattle pulled and treated appropriately. Well, the signs to look for to find the BRD in your cattle. I uh, look for, you know, their heads down, the droopy ears, snotty noses they'll have a sometimes they'll be kind of drooly having fluid from the lungs coming back up uh, you know when they first arrive a lot of times you can really tell if uh, you've got the calf standing at the back of the pen and everybody else has come up to the feed bunk that's a real good sign look for cattle that are a little lethargic Cow-calf producers can help reduce the prevalence of BRD outbreaks by weaning and preconditioning calves prior to sale. Although the Vogels attempt to source cattle of known origin, it's not always possible. Dan Vogel knows from experience that certain classes of cattle come with animal health risks. You take ranch calves that come in walking and bawling that have not been pre-vaccinated, we'll treat right around 15 to 20 percent of those cattle. You take yard cattle that come in that have been exposed to everything, uh, those cattle, you're going to treat anywhere from 15 to 30 percent of those cattle. is just numbers that have come around uh, with years and years of experience. Because the health status of calves isn't always known, cattle feeders need an effective treatment option for dealing with BRD outbreaks. Zuprivo tiloporosin, a product from Merck Animal Health, is the newest macrolide available for the treatment and control of BRD. Zuprivo can also be used to treat cattle upon arrival to help prevent outbreaks before they occur. Bactericidal and bacteriostatic are properties of antibiotics uh, that relate to uh, how quickly they kill bacteria. Bacteriostatic means that it slows the growth and so the animal has a chance to get on top of the infection that way. Bactericidal means that it actually kills the bacteria and so Zuprivo has both of those properties and uh, just adds to its effectiveness really in, in, in being a fast acting antibiotic and helping get the cattle back on their feet more quickly. Zuprivo is an antibiotic for rapid and sustained control of BRD. This rapid control helps to get cattle back on feed faster. Those characteristics have made Zuprivo a top choice of cattle feeders. When we find our BRD cattle, we'll treat them with the Zuprivo, and we send them anymore. I've been sent them right back to their home pen, and first did that this winter. We sent them home and the next day we'd ride back through and those cattle they'd be up at the bunk eating where the day before they were at the bottom end of the pen and you could just see a vast improvement in them and seemed to do real well. Fast identification and treatment is a key to effectively limiting the impact of BRD. After sick cattle are identified and pulled for treatment, Zuprivo goes to work quickly, limiting the spread of pathogens and the damage they can cause. The important properties of uh, an antibiotic in, in treating respiratory disease are uh, how quickly they're absorbed, uh, how soon they reach the critical levels where they'll stop bacterial growth, and then how long a duration uh, that they're, they're active for. And so this is a good example where Zuprivo really has a, a unique spot in the market and that it has all of those properties. Very quickly absorbed, uh, reaches uh, effective levels in the, in the lung within uh, an hour to, to four hours. And so it really stands alone in that regard.
The ease of use is another important consideration when selecting a product for BRD treatment. Suprevo, with its simple-to-follow dosing calculation and easy syringability in nearly all weather conditions, helps producers ensure they're dosing animals properly. This translates into lower costs, reduced labor, and ultimately increased profitability. Dosing compliance with antibiotics is, is critical uh, because if we're, say, estimating the body weight of cattle or we're rounding up the dose volume that's required, uh, then we're tending to either underdose or overdose. Underdosing, of course, is going to give us a, a lower efficacy, uh, a lower success rate in treatment. Uh, overdosing is uh, expensive, and so we don't want to be on either side of that. So the more accurate we can be uh, in that dosing level, the the better, better it is for animal and uh, owners. Suprevo has been well received by animal health professionals across the country. The ease of use and bactericidal action of Suprevo make it a top choice among feedlot managers. Suprevo has been really exciting out in the field. Uh, the producers that I've talked to that have used it, uh, both from a treatment perspective as well as a metaphylactic perspective, have actually been very uh, positive. Uh, they, uh, from a treatment perspective, they're actually seeing quicker responses. Uh, and then from a metaphylactic perspective, we're actually seeing the product work in a more consistent and a longer time frame. So they're having a lot less repulls out in the feed yard. Because cattle treated with Suprevo are spending less time in the sick pen suffering from BRD and more time at the feed bunk, they're helping producers' bottom line. Suprevo is just one of many animal health solutions offered by Merck Animal Health. Those solutions also extend to technical expertise and a variety of easily accessible resources. You know, we ride through the cattle every day looking for the respiratories and when we pull, our first line of defense now is uh, we use the Zuprivo. Reporting from Vogel Feeders in Ballantyne, Montana, I'm Matt Fleck for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Now for more information on Zuprivo and other available products from Merck Animal Health, visit usa.zuprivo.com or you can visit our website. That's cattlemen to cattlemen.org. We'll have more right after this. Your herd, your business, your family. You've always protected what matters most so you know how important vaccinations are for healthy cattle. And with Vista vaccines from Merck Animal Health, you know you're covered. No other vaccine works like Vista. Only Vista gives you complete dual action pneumonia protection and complete one dose fetal protection for the entire pregnancy. Protect what matters most. Talk to your veterinarian or animal health supplier about Vista. We don't sit idle, wondering how we're gonna build a better truck. We get out there and walk a mile, thousands of miles, in the footsteps of the guys we build trucks for. The groundbreaking Ram Heavy Duty, with 30,000 pounds of towing and 850 pound feet of torque. Welcome back. Members of the cattle industry know how much time and effort it takes to care for the land and the animals they raise. But that perspective is often not shared by others who are disconnected from the cattle industry. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter has more on a program designed to help ranchers and cattle feeders tell their story. Cattlemen and women play a key role in feeding the world and they work hard to do it. But many consumers struggle to understand how beef is produced or who produces it. That's why it's important for ranchers and cattle feeders to take an active role in connecting with consumers and telling the story of responsible beef production. 
you don't have to be a professional speaker to do this. You have to be able to shake people's hands, look them in the eye, ask them some questions about what they're interested in, and relate to them on a human basis. It really is as simple as having a conversation, and no one can have that conversation about your role in the cattle business as well as you can. Michelle Payne Canoper works with farmers and ranchers to help them learn the best ways to engage with consumers. It's part of Merck Animal Health's Responsible Beef Campaign. The program was launched in May of 2013 with a vision for empowering cattle feeders to spread their message of responsible beef production. When I look at the Responsible Beef Initiative, it's about empowering cattlemen to take their future in their hands, whether it's for their children, their grandchildren, whatever it may be, and really just to helping them understand that, look, I understand the culture of agriculture is modesty and independence and stubbornness, but that doesn't bode well when you need to ha have a conversation about what you're doing on the farm. So it's about helping future generations overcome some of those challenges that we've had in the past in sharing our message effectively. We really felt it was important for producers to find their voice and to tell their story. It's the people who are actually taking care of the cattle, taking care of the land, supporting their communities, and building their businesses. As Merck Animal Health discussed ideas for the program, four areas of responsibility became top of mind. Your cattle, your land, your community, and your business. When we talk about cattle, I mean, it's, it's everything we do to, to care for the cattle and well-being and care and, and animal health and, and, and looking after the animals to make sure they're comfortable and, and happy. Then we look at land, and, and we're not making any more land. And we all know that if we don't take care of this land, it's not going to take care of us. We can pass it down to future generations. Then we have communities. Community is kind of my favorite because it really starts with family. And when you look at the cattle industry, it's focused on family. And then the next thing would be employees. And the interesting thing about employees is, is most employees are customers too because you know they, they enjoy a good steak and a, a good hamburger as a meal also. And then you start looking at local communities. You have local communities. It's the hardware store. It's, it's the feed store. It's your barber. It's all the people in your local community that your business supports. Business is the most important, I think, though, because if you don't have a successful business, if, you're, if your business isn't sustainable, these other things don't really matter. And so a lot of people are, are worried about talking about business and, and making money, but really it's pretty important to anybody that you were able to turn that dollar over and keep your business going. My challenge always, whether I'm working with cattlemen, whether I'm working with grain producers, or whether I'm working with scientists, is to simply find an opportunity to tell your story. And that's why I wrote No More Food Fights. When you look at the book and you consider the opportunity to really reach across the plate, in my mind, that's where our opportunity lies, is in the conversation. When Merck invited me to be a part of the Responsible Beef Initiative, it was a lot of fun because the four pillars aligned with no more food fights and many of the things that I had covered in the book. To me, it's about being proactive because if you only react, that will be the reference point from which people operate. Whereas if you're proactive and you stand up and you simply share a picture on Facebook or you have a conversation in, in your church parking lot about, hey, this is what we're doing this week and this is why, people start seeing inside the lives of cattle producers and they realize that they're good people. The program began with a series of workshops across the U.S. The workshops included education in both large group settings and with small group hands-on discussions and training. Participants included cattle feeders, veterinarians, and nutritionists, all coming together to learn how to better tell their stories of responsible beef production. Well, we've had responsible beef workshops in the Panhandle of Texas, in Kansas, in Nebraska, and Iowa, really in, in the heart of cattle feeding country. Well, the workshops really came about to, to help people understand these four pillars and also give them a chance to, to learn how to, to find their voice. My hope is that they're armed with the tools to go home and have an effective conversation about agriculture, not only about the cattle business, but really about many of the issues that are happening around the plate. It really helps uh, nutritionists and veterinarians that are working closely with their customers to, to have that voice also. It's interesting to even think about a nutritionist. You know, really, they're a, a cow dietitian. 
uh, that came out in one of our workshops and, and you just saw the nutritionist all of a sudden go, wow, you know, that's right, I'm the same. And so they can really relate to uh, a dietitian at a hospital or something like this where they can, they can have a, a really cool conversation about beef. The website responsiblebeef.com was also launched. It connects cattle feeders through feed yard specific articles, product information, and tools for their trade. The goal is for cattle feeders to feel empowered to discuss their production practices, learn new industry information, and understand Merck Animal Health's commitment to the cattle industry. We talk about what people are doing kind of cool in their, in their cattle feeding operations across the country. So, and, and we have all the pillars there. We talk about cattle, we talk about land, we talk about community, we talk about business. And, and so it supports all those pillars and we rotate new stories in. It's really a way to, to provide people some ideas on how they would talk to maybe their target audience. The Responsible Beef Campaign has been a success with crowded workshops and eager, engaged participants. Merck Animal Health plans to keep providing cattle feeders with the tools they need to spread the positive message of the beef industry. It's been very, very positive. People said, you know, I haven't realized that I needed to really focus on talking to somebody and relating with somebody before I go into talking to them about beef. And I think that was the biggest learning part. Um, one of my favorite things from the workshop that I've learned is it's, it's not what you say, it's how you make people feel is what they remember. My measure of success is if they're doing something differently in a month from now. If they're out there and they're reaching their hand out, whether it would be in a local pub, whether it would be when they're in the, with their extended family at Thanksgiving, or if they're even sharing a photo on Facebook, and simply saying, hey, this is what I did and this is why, that's a huge win. Again, it's about the heart-to-heart -heart connection and it's about the personal conversations. Well, I think the best thing about having cattlemen tell the story is, is that they have a lot of value and they're, and they're the people actually with their, having their boots dirty. If it was me telling the story, it wouldn't mean anything. But it's the people who are actually taking care of the cattle, taking care of the lands, supporting their communities, and building their businesses. Reporting from Omaha, Nebraska, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. For more information on the Responsible Beef Campaign, check out their website at responsiblebeef.com. This is yours, and so is what grows there. Not theirs, or theirs, yours. You need this to fight this, and this to grow more this. Because the more of this you feed them, the less this you spend on that, which leaves more of this here. Don't let them take this from you. Chaparral takes care of weeds and brush, and that's that. Join America's cattle industry for the 2014 Summer Conference in Denver, Colorado. It's a great opportunity to meet your fellow cattlemen and women, plus spend time planning for the future of your operation in our great industry. Bring the whole family and join us in Denver for the 2014 Cattle Industry Summer Conference, July 30th through August 2nd. For details, call 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit us at beefusa.org. Each fall, calves face the greatest health challenge of their lives as they move off farms and ranches and are commingled in feedlot. Joining us to talk about some of these challenges is Dr. Kevin Hill, a technical services veterinarian with Merck Animal Health. Dr. Hill, thanks for coming to the show. Thank you, glad to be here. Well, fall runs in full swing right now. Tell us about some of the challenges that creates for calves. Well, if you think about it from the calf's perspective, this is a, this is a big disruption in his life. Uh, we start generally in gathering these cattle from wide open spaces and collecting them, uh, separating the calves from the cows, vaccinating, processing, load them on trucks, send them maybe a day's uh, uh, trip away, mm -hmm. unload them with uh, a lot of new friends and uh, turn them out to feed they probably haven't seen before and 
don't know where the water is, all sorts of things. So this is a, this is a big time challenge for them in, in lots of ways. Well, specifically, what kind of health problems does this new scenery and new conditions create for those calves? Undoubtedly, the biggest problem the whole beef industry faces in terms of health is uh, respiratory disease. And so uh, that's exactly what happens to these calves. They are, they are presented with a new bacteria and virus exposures that they haven't seen before. And so doubled with that stress factor, then uh, respiratory disease is a big issue. We talk a lot about the costliness of BRD. Uh, what are some things that producers should consider in managing it effectively? I like to think of it as, as two primary factors that they need to, to manage. One would be stress, and the other is trying to supercharge the calf's immune system, if you will. And so in terms of managing stress, we talked about all those things that happen sometimes in a very short period of time. So if we can spread those out so that gathering and weaning and processing don't all happen on the same day, mm -hmm. they don't get shipped uh, until after weaning, uh, ideally, uh, that can help manage stress a lot. And then in terms of trying to improve the status of their immune system, then we're talking about uh, vaccinations and uh, things like that to help prepare them better. Well, I want to follow up about this concept of immunity because it's so important. What are some things producers can do to really turbocharge or enhance that immune response? Um, generally, the things that we recommend would be to try to get two rounds of vaccination into the calves before they're going to ship uh, into the feedlot. And uh, so if they can, they can do that, and additionally, again, if they can wean those calves for 30 to 45 days, those are the things that, that help that immune system the most. You know, I know as a cow-calf producer, uh, we, we always believe it's so important to get colostrum in the calves right up front, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so assuming we've done that, then, then what else can we think about uh, throughout that calf's lifestyle to begin building immunity even earlier? Well, it's interesting you mentioned colostrum because it's the effects of not getting enough colostrum at birth extend clear in not mm. just in the suckling phase but into the feedlot phase. We know that calves that didn't get enough colostrum at birth have a much higher risk of, of disease and, and death in the feedlot. So, so that's number one. Um, and then as the protection from those maternal antibodies starts to drop off over three to four months of age, then that calf needs to start developing its own active immunity. And that's where the vaccination programs come in to help uh, stimulate that immune system. So specifically, uh, what other advice might you have for folks as they approach fall weaning time? Uh, you said, first of all, try to, try to break some of those uh, uh, management practices up so, so all the stress doesn't occur at one time. What other advice might you give uh, cow-calf producers? Well, there's, there's kind of three basic things that um, uh, producers can go, do. They need, number one, to uh, develop a good uh, vaccination schedule. Um, they need to uh, uh, eliminate parasites uh, from the calves. Uh, and in terms of vaccinations, two categories there are really. One is respiratory disease. The other we haven't talked about is clostridial disease mm -hmm. protection, just kind of a standard thing that should be included. And, um, you know, for some folks, uh, this, this may seem really, really complex. Lots of products, uh, lots of protocols, lots of timing elements and so forth. Um, where can producers go to get some additional help in, in thinking through this? Well, this is where having a, a team uh, effect uh, with your veterinarian is really important. I mean, it's, he's the one that has the most relevant information as far as what diseases are prevalent in your area, as well as the area where these calves are going to ship to. Um, when those vaccines ought to be given, which vaccines he prefers, all those kind of things are uh, things that the veterinarian is really helpful for. So uh, I think that that interaction is really essential for a good health program. Dr. Hill, maybe you can explain a few of the things that Merck Animal Health has done uh, to, to assist producers uh, in this planning process as well. Yeah, we've recently uh, introduced a, a value-added program called Prime Vac, mm -hmm. and that's just a, a collection of these ideas and suggestions to help producers organize what vaccines they give, when they give them, so that the result then is in that most well-prepared and uh, uh, healthy calf. 
So outline for our viewers, if you would, uh, the primary categories that, that PrimeVac encompasses. Okay. And that would be, again, the respiratory protection. Uh, certainly, again, as BRD is our number one issue at all sort of centers around respiratory protection. Uh, number two would be clostridial protection, like black leg, malignant edema, kind of sudden death issues, typically. Mm -hmm. And the third is control of internal parasites. Now, I know Merck has products in each of these three areas. Do you want to highlight a few of those? Right. For what respiratory protection are Vista vaccines? Uh, uh, Vista 5, for instance, has the five uh, common viruses that are involved in respiratory disease. And then in Vista once is a, is a complete vaccine that adds the bacterial components of uh, Mannheimia and Pasteurella to that vaccine. So we get a very nice complete respiratory protection out of the, the Vista vaccines. So the second category you mentioned, I think, was clostridial. What are some specific Merck products uh, that, that help protect against uh, clostridial issues? Again, we have a kind of a family of, of vaccines called Vision mm -hmm. in various combinations with uh, seven antigens or eight or even uh, uh, some that have nine with tetanus protection. So, uh, and they can, can be combined with uh, pink eye protection or with somnus protection. So we have a, a large group of clostridial vaccines there to work with. And then the third category you mentioned was uh, the, the parasite control. Um, talk to us a little bit about Merck's products and specifically what, what might be different about some of Merck's uh, in, in internal and external parasite control products. Yeah, Safeguard is the name of our parasite control product and its chemical name is fenbendazole. Mm. The fenbendazole category is distinctly different from other, most other wormers on the market. Uh, most of the, the others fall into the ivermectin class. Mm -hmm. So the importance of that these days is that there's increasing evidence that ivermectins are, are losing their effectiveness. And so fembendazole, especially in combination with the ivermectins, gives outstanding control. And so um, getting that word out to producers and veterinarians now is really important as they understand that these worms are changing. And so our, our approach to control has to change as well. Very good. And um, I have to ask you the obvious question, Dr. Hill. I mean, all these things we've been talking about cost money to producers. And so fundamentally, um, is there a premium involved? Uh, is there a return on investment for producers who go through these precautions and make these investments in, in trying to improve the, the health of their calves? Yeah, it, we've got really good data to answer that question now, whereas before sometimes you sit in an auction and you can't see that those vaccinated calves brought any more than the, the neighbors unvaccinated, but uh, through, especially through superior auction data, we're able to analyze that. And we know that uh, calves that at least get those uh, two rounds of vaccinations that I talked about, they'll bring approximately $25 per head more than an unvaccinated calf. And if you take that same calf and add 45 days of weaning to it, that doubles to somewhere near $50 a head is the premium. So there's, there's a good return there for the effort that goes into it. So it sounds like uh, Merck's PrimeVac program really does create value for producers. It really has that opportunity to, to do that by, by veterinarians and producers working together. The other thing that that PrimeVac program is going to do is uh, the veterinarian will be able to produce a certificate of health that will list the details of all vaccinations that have been given, wow. and then it'll have his signature on it. So it's a nice third-party verification yeah. uh, the, of the health practices that have been uh, completed. And so uh, in the end, what we really think, it's, it's, a, it's a win for the producer. It's a win for the buyer who knows he's getting his money's worth. And so uh, uh, all around, uh, everybody comes out ahead. Well, no doubt as these cattle become more and more valuable, uh, it's, it's really incumbent on us to do everything we can to keep these cattle healthy. We've got a very expensive product out there these days to protect. That's yeah, right. Indeed. Thank you so much for coming to the show. Thank you. To find out more about the value of preconditioning your calves and protecting their health, visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. We'll be right back. When it comes to your land, it pays to be smart. At New Holland, smart means giving you a wide range of options to fit your needs, like smooth cutting, flood-free conditioning, and versatility. Smart means putting more hay in the bale and leaving less in the field. 
It also means providing exceptional after-sales support and growing a legacy that goes far beyond equipment. That's New Holland Smart. Visit your local New Holland dealer today. No storm is too powerful for Neopurina wind and rain storm minerals, formulated with ultimate weather resistance. That means more minerals in the feeder and available to your cattle. Wind and rain storm minerals provide more consistent intake and balanced mineral nutrition to optimize herd health and breedback rates. See the difference at your local Purina dealer or visit CattleNutrition.com. Wind and rain storm minerals, another way Purina is building better cattle. Want to help elect officials who understand the needs of the cattle industry? Then visit BeefUSA.org and check out the NCBA Political Action Committee online auction page. There, NCBA members can view and bid on a wide variety of exciting travel and merchandise, and the funds go to support NCBA's work in Washington, D.C. You must be a member to contribute to NCBA PAC, so don't wait. Join today. With the advent of third-party verification, cowmen are able to add value to their calves by preconditioning or early weaning or seek specialty markets like all-natural, sugar-free, or do source and age verification for export. Well, that's what IMI does, and it's not as expensive as you might think. Call them. What do you got to lose? IMI Global's Green Ear Tag. It's like having Honest Abe co-sign your note. IMIGlobal.com. Let's face it, you don't think a lot about your trailer hitch. You use it and forget it. We understand, but at B&W, we think about it. Short nights, long hauls, never-ending chores, the unthinkable. We think about it all, so you don't have to. B&W, trusted. Derry got a new hound dog puppy and named her Billy. Well, Billy soon adapted to the new neighborhood, and by the time she was nine months old, she had begun to explore further afield, so it was necessary to pen her up at night. One morning, Derry went out in her comfy blue nightgown with a faded pattern of penguins and snowflakes to feed Billy. To her exasperation, Billy had flown the coop. Derry scuffled across the yard shouting, Billy, Billy, Billy! At the edge of the pasture, she stopped to survey the horizon. Lo and behold, she saw Billy across the pasture in the neighbor's yard. It was an acid reflux moment. Billy was racing along the ridge with an object in her jaws, a white feathered object to be precise. Still yelling, Derry climbed the wire fence and Billy, Billy, and crossed the field with her penguin and snowflake nighty dragging in her wake and caught goofy little Billy who was delighted to show her what she had caught. And then Derry noticed that the ground around her looked like a broiler battlefield, a Campbell soup catastrophe, a field of flattened fowl, and all the chickens were naked. Bare breasts everywhere. It looked like one of those Renaissance paintings. They had lost their feathers. Distraught, Derry went up to her neighbor's door. She confessed Billy's crime, chicken murder in the second degree. She offered to pay restitution. Well, the neighbor took in Derry's appearance, muddy up to her hips, feathers stuck to her arms and in her hair, and her nightgown dragging behind her like a bridal train at a greased pig contest. They're not dead, said the neighbor. I chased her dog away, just not in time. But your dog didn't kill him. She just plucked them all. Well, what can I do, asked Derry. Well, the neighbor thought it over and said, well, I am a little worried about him getting a heat stroke. Oh, okay, said Derry, I'll, I'll run home and get some sunscreen. Either that, said the neighbor, or barbecue sauce. This is Baxter Black from out there, Chicken Man. This isn't a job, it's a calling. 
Your hard work helps feed the world. Being linked to those who care for the land is our calling. For more than 175 years, John Deere has been a proud partner of the cattle business. That's why we bring you special NCBA member discounts, so you can get the right equipment. Strong, rugged, versatile, and ready to work hard. Talk to your John Deere dealer to learn more about your NCBA member discounts. John Deere, committed to the land, committed to your success. Hello, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Each week, we travel the country to bring you the latest cattle industry news and information. Check us out at cattlemantocattlemen.org or on Facebook and Twitter. Time now for this week's legacy photos submitted by ranching families from around the country. Let's have a look. Send us your own legacy photos by visiting our website, cattlemantocattlemen.org. Include your ranch or farm name and hometown, and we may use them on a future episode. Well, that wraps up this edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Thanks so much for spending time with us. We'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.